Florida Sport Fishing TV presents Captain Mike's Rigging Station, powered by Mercury Marine. What's up, guys? I'm Captain Mike, and welcome to my rigging station. We've got a really awesome topic that we're going to be discussing today, and that's deep water grouper fishing here in the Florida Keys. You know, the, the Keys Island chain is absolutely famous for black grouper, gag grouper, red grouper, and I kind of consider those shallow water groupers because you're primarily targeting those fish in really 200 feet of water or less, you know, around the wrecks and the rubble, the reef and structure. However, way offshore, we've got a completely different fishery, okay? Looking for these deep water groupers, primarily the snowy grouper and the yellow edge grouper. And we're talking about fishing depths that range from 600 feet on the shallow side to, you know, close to 900, even a thousand feet on the deeper side. Really a very, very specialized fishery. And it's something that we can only do at certain times of the year. Right now, based on current regulations, May, June, July, and August is when we could really target the snowies and the yellow edge. And understand the limits are strict, very, very strict. Snowy groupers, one fish per boat. So I'll tell you what, we are literally going out there looking for the one, the one fish that could really make or break the entire trip. The yellow edge groupers, you are allowed three fish per person. Uh, fortunately, they both swim, feed, and inhabit the same territory. So even though we can go out and look for potentially the yellow edge or the snowy, they're gonna be intermixed with each other. And there's also gonna be some bycatch. There's gonna be some tile fish. There might be some blackfin tuna, but we really don't care about those. That's not what we're gonna talk about today. We are specifically gonna talk about these deep water groupers, you know, how to rig for them, where to find them, and all of the little details that are gonna make a big difference. Understand our deep drop fishery here in the Keys is vast and wide. We have a lot of different territories here in the Keys. Of course, on the Gulf side, that's a different fishery altogether. To run way offshore to Pulley Ridge and areas like that, we're talking about a 150 mile trek from the middle Keys here. What we're going to discuss today is fishing the Atlantic side. It's Florida Keys deep water grouper fishing on the Atlantic side, where we're primarily fishing anywhere from 15 to about 25 miles offshore. Now, certainly understand we can run way down off Key West. We can run east to Isle Mirada, even up off Key Largo. Here in the Middle Keys off a of marathon, most of our spots are in that 15 to 20 mile range. And we're fishing a variety of different types of bottom. We've got sand and coral mixed together. We've got shells and gravel mixed together in certain areas, plateaus that are just muddy. We've got tremendous drop-offs that literally just sheer cliffs near, you know, just falling into near abyssal depths. So a lot of ledges and ridges. And we've got big, hills and mounds that come 100, 200 feet off the bottom. And you can find these snowy groupers and these yellow edge groupers on all of this different types of structure. So it really is a cat and mouse type of game. It's trying the different habitats, the different bottom contours, and the different forms of, of structure to really try and get dialed in. So let's talk about our tackle first and foremost. First, the rod and reel. This is, of course, perhaps the most important part of the equation. We're fishing a Shimano Beastmaster, incredibly light. It's matched to a Chaos. This is like a 40 pound class, bent butt, deep drop rod. You can see a short butt, really, really light. And that's the key. I really like to keep this grouper fishing as sporty as possible. Look, you can do this manually. You don't need power assist equipment, but let's be honest with each other, having a reel, with the power assist feature enables me to do a lot more drops on any particular day. I'm just gonna be a much more effective fisherman. And if I wanna crank that fish in by hand manually, I certain, certainly have an option to do that 
with this Beastmaster. So really nice benefit. Variable speed, tremendous line capacity, which is very important for the way we fish because we're often paying out a lot of lines. So having plenty of line capacity is key to success when chasing these deep water groupers. The rod is very light, very sensitive because I wanna be able to detect even the most subtle strike. And understand, look, a grouper bite from a big grouper is not subtle. He's going to inhale that bait, okay? But you've got a lot of scope. You've got a lot of line in the water. You're fishing a lot of lead. You know, we like to fish two pounds, but three pounds, four pounds, and even five pounds in some deeper water. So there's a lot of different elements in the entire rig, in the entire setup. Having that sensitive tip really makes it nice to feel and see every single strike. Chaos. Gear matters. And we got him, baby. We got him. Got him. Oh, what a slob. That's what I'm talking about, baby, right there. What a stud. That right there, baby, is deep dropping. Chaos. Gear matters. Shop online or visit our new superstore for everything fishing. Buying or selling anywhere in the Florida Keys, navigating the real estate waters is smooth sailing with Nate at the helm. He actually helped me find my home. Nate's also a family guy and has a clear understanding of coastal living. Nate also has firsthand experience in primary residences, second homes, investment properties, and even new construction. And when it comes to buying or selling in the Florida Keys, Nate is your guy. Buying or selling property anywhere in the Florida Keys, you have to work with someone you trust. I helped Mike and I can help you. Now let's talk about the tackle, because again, even though we touched on the rod and reel, obviously the terminal gear plays a huge role in how successful we are. Once again, I wanna stress that I like to go light, I like to go sensitive, it's gonna make a very, very big difference, and it really is just gonna enhance the entire deep drop experience for these deep water snappers and groupers. The rod itself, like I said, super light. However, if I'm in a scenario where I wanna fish some deeper water, maybe I wanna fish more lead and really push the boundaries, push the limits, all I have to do is unscrew this butt section and I can screw it right into a shorter rod, 6'6", 50 pound class, heavier tip right here can withstand more weight. So having that versatility with both rods, really, really a nice option. But for the most part, you'll see me fishing the lighter rod. That's the one that I like more. The line itself, 40 pound diamond braid. This is probably one of the most vital ingredients in the entire setup because that ultra thin line, that's what allows us to get away with as little lead as possible, which creates the most natural presentation possible and also the, more, the most sporty situation possible. Even a small fish is gonna feel fun on this light tackle. But understand when you hook that super slob, that one fish that's gonna change your life, that 40 pound braid has 
has plenty of strength to handle even the largest fish. Remember, the reel has a drag and you're in a moving boat. You're not anchored. You're fighting a current. You could always maneuver the boat. You can reduce that drag. The reel is variable speed. You can lower the speed, which I highly recommend whenever you hook a big fish on the bottom, don't just slam that reel into high gear, lock down the drag because you like to see that rod doubled over. You're going to pull a hook on a fish. There's a lot of different things happening. A lot of line out, weight on the bottom, spinning, fish spinning around the rig itself. So a lot of different things going on there. The line itself, because braid has no stretch whatsoever, we connect it to about 30 feet of 80 pound monofilament leader. And it could be 100 pound leader, that's perfectly fine as well. I've experimented with both and I've had equal results. We connect the braid to that top shot with an Albright knot. Very streamlined, very small, goes in and out of these small guides very, very easily. Okay, doesn't get hung up. No extra terminal tackle that you know you need on there. It keeps everything as stealthy and as natural as possible. And you could always cut off a few feet at the end of that top shot if it gets chafed or damaged in any way whatsoever. But remember, it's absolutely essential because that top shot has elasticity. It literally has a lot of flex to it like a rubber band and it acts like a shock absorber. So really important to prevent pulled hooks. Speaking of the hooks, let's talk about the rig. Now, one box, that's really all that I need when I'm heading offshore looking for these deep water groupers is one box with all of my gear. Let me show you exactly what I bring along um, and understand, look, everybody does this a little bit differently. I'm not saying my way is the best way, I'm saying my way works and it certainly will help you shorten the learning curve and improve your skill set. Once you get dialed in, you can make small adjustments based on your tackle, on the way that you fish, your preferences and whatever it is that you have the most confidence in because confidence is key that's for sure in your presentation so we've got some lights you know you can fish these little dura lights you know they're water activated some people believe no light no bite i've had success either way but it certainly doesn't hurt to put a small light but keep it small. Don't put one of those big bulky swordfish lights on there. It's gonna create a lot of drag. Of course, some just some live bait hooks because even though we're not talking about dolphin fishing, we are in dolphin territory. And obviously if some fish show up, which 50% of the time they do, you obviously wanna have an opportunity to capitalize on the dolphin as well. From there, Power cords extended. You guys know I extend these cords. The standard six to eight feet to 20 to 25 feet gives me plenty of mobility around the boat. What's also really important to remember is these power cords, they're fragile. Take good care of them. And what I like to do is use some sort of corrosion protectant and periodically I'll spray the plug on both sides there just to prevent any corrosion buildup because it's gonna happen, I promise you. If you don't take care of these cords, they're gonna fail. For over 80 years, Furuno Innovations have helped more fishermen find and catch more fish than any other brand. And we're raising the bar again with Navnet TZ Touch 3's new PBG and Fish It Drifted Technologies. Build your own three-dimensional shaded relief charts to find trophy fish others have missed. Perform accurate drifts the first time, every time. Be the one everyone follows. When you're serious about fishing, lead the way and get serious with Faruno. The weather is beautiful and the fishing is great. Captain Pips has the largest rental boat fleet in the Keys, including new twin engine center consoles. Five locations, 150 boats ready to fish and cruise, and we deliver. Stay and play in a fully appointed cottage or catch the sunset off your very own Aqua Lodge. For the best hassle-free vacation the entire family will enjoy, no one does the Florida Keys better than Captain Pips. Mention Florida Sport Fishing and receive 10% off your entire stay. Mike and welcome to my rigging station. You've asked over and over, here's the answer. Dubro fishing, 
four different styles of rod and reel holder mounts for every application. Their ingenious lure and leader keeper system is perfect, either permanently mounted or portable. It keeps everything I need right at my fingertips so I could focus on staying hooked up. Listen, I count on Dubro products, so should you. Check out their full line of innovative gear at DubroFishing.com. From there, obviously the rigs, right? This is perhaps one of the most important, if not important, most important part of the entire equation is the rig itself. Now look, when I'm targeting these deep water groupers with this light equipment, I wanna go as stealthy as I possibly can. My basic rig is very, very clean. It's a two hook rig. It's on 150 pound Mamoy extra hard leader material, 90 VMC number 7385 circle hooks in line tournament circle hooks. You've got a swivel on the top. You've got a snap swivel on the bottom because remember that sinker is gonna be spinning like crazy all the way up and all the way down. So you've gotta have some swivels on there to prevent your rig from getting all fouled up. I keep a lot of rigs. I, I'm not rigging on the boat. I don't have time for that. If I bust off a rig, get sharked, get rocked up, a lot of different things are gonna happen. I wanna be able to just grab another rig and get back in the game as quickly as I possibly can. But of course, I also have a lot of spare rigs and a lot of rigs that I've experimented with, trying different lengths of branch lines, different hooks, all sorts of different stuff. And you know what? Whatever you do, let me just tell you right now, stay away from this stuff, okay? Stay away from these big, bulky, deep drop rigs. Just look at that. Look how much, you know, this is what, a one, two, three, four, five hook rig. I'm fishing a two hook rig, okay? But just look how much drag that's gonna create in the water. And that's gonna require me to fish heavier line, heavier lead, a heavier outfit. It's not gonna be anywhere near as sporty. My rig's gonna come scoping off the bottom. You just don't need all of that schmeckla. You really don't. We're targeting one fish at a time, remember that. And really a nice two hook rig is just ideal. If you'd like, you can take another one of these rigs and connect it to the top stretch it out and have a four hook rig and you're covering a lot more of the water column as well. And you're presenting four baits on the bottom instead of two. So you could always modify your approach based on the conditions, maybe you're not getting bites, whatever the case may be. Now, in addition, I've got just a box, a little flambeau box with extra crimps, extra hooks. You never know, I might need to make a repair but that pretty much narrows it down. It's that simple. And of course the leads, as I mentioned, we prefer to fish a two pound lead, sometimes three pounds. If I push the boundaries, if I'm fishing 800, 900, 1,000 feet of water, there's a lot of current, I might bump up the four or five pounds, never any more than that. I'm not deep dropping per se with a big, you know, uh, Tiagra 80 on a hooker auto stop with 12 pounds of lead. It's a different animal altogether. This is all under your arm. It's all very, very sensitive. And by keeping the bale open and feeding out line as the boat is drifting, I can get away with fishing lighter lead and keeping that rig right on the bottom, right where those big deep water groupers are gonna feed. Now, when it comes to feeding, a big deep water grouper can eat anything that it would like, and they eat a lot. They eat a lot of different fish, a lot of different shellfish, uh, crustaceans, all sorts of stuff off the bottom, but they don't eat often. But when they do eat, it's generally a big meal. So I like to present them with a nice offering. Certainly a squid, a nice whole squid is a beautiful bait, but them deep water groupers, they like the meat. I don't care what it is, as long as it's fresh. May it be a big bonita strip, uh, a big dolphin strip, a tilefish strip, you know what that is? jack, tuna, skipjack. I don't care what it is, as long as it's fresh, put some meat on the hook along with that big squid. Remember, you're trying to entice a deep water grouper who can pretty much swallow a watermelon, they have huge mouths, okay? And you really want that fish to, to commit 
And if it's just a small offering, he may turn away from it. He may not leave his lair and come too far away from where his comfort zone is. But if there's a nice big meal, really fresh, it's just gonna be absolutely irresistible to this big grouper, okay? You're gonna feel that thump. The fish has got the bait in his mouth. He's sucked it down his throat. He's very likely hooked at this point. Look, point the rod tip right at the water, right at the line, slowly engage the reel. You could either turn manually or you can go into gear and you know activate the power assist feature on the Beastmaster, but go slow. Remember, there's so many different things happening. The boat is drifting at anywhere, usually from two to three knots, sometimes a little less, sometimes a little more, uh, but generally two to three knots. The boat's moving away from the fish. You just hooked a big, strong, powerful grouper that doesn't want to come off the bottom. His life revolves around the bottom, okay? And you're trying to persuade that fish to come up off the bottom when he was just hooked. He's full of vigor, he's full of energy, and he's very, very angry, and he's very confused. Plus, you have a lot of line out. Again, we're fishing six to 900 feet. Look. Certainly you can catch these snowy groupers and the yellow edge groupers. You'll catch some shallower than 600 and you'll catch some deeper than 900, but that's the kill box. That's the zone right there, that's six to 900 feet. And if you're paying a lot of line out, you've got much more line out than that. You've got the weight that enters the equation. So just so many different factors where if you sock down that power assist feature and slam on the gas, too many things going on there, very likely you're gonna pull a hook. And you'll generally lose these big groupers in the first 30 to 60 seconds. So that's such a vital part of the entire equation is when you hook that fish to really take your time and go slow. Even though we're fishing deep water, big tackle, heavy leads, you know, heavy line, all sorts of stuff, big baits, it's still a game of finesse. I can't stress that enough. And when you're really just looking for that one fish with that big snowy grouper, you don't want to blow the only shot that you might get. So it's really important that you avoid angler failure, avoid tackle failure. I stress these in all of my seminars, and I don't know if it could be any more important than in this fishery right here. Amongst cats, there are many lions, but only one rules the pride. Sea Hunter CTS. Carbon Kevlar construction. Optimum stability. Decisive performance. Sea Hunter boats. Factory direct sales. Factory direct service. Number one in owner experience. Schedule a zero obligation sea trial and feel the difference. Don't even lift and pump, just reel. Just reel. Come on, come on, somebody get in there, get in there. Crank, 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 crank. Got him, got him, got him. We got him. You got it, nice. We got him. Get him in the boat, ready? Oh! 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 your rod. Never jeopardize losing a rod, ever. Now, when? When do we look for these groupers? Remember what I said earlier, this season is open May, June, July, August, however, it could close just like that, okay? FWC, you know, all of these governing bodies, they make changes based on catch criteria. Uh, just recently, golden tile fish closed, you know, earlier than expected. So they may close the season on you before you know it. So make sure that you stay, you know, tuned and that you really understand when it's open and when it's not, because of course it doesn't make sense to target these fish during closed season, right? It just doesn't make sense sense. Now, fortunately, here in the Keys, we have a lot of other deep water bottom fisheries as well. We've got the snowy groupers. We have the yellow edge groupers that we just discussed. We're going to go out there. We're going to fish the different forms of structure. We may fish some flat plateaus that are mixed with gravel and sand. How do we find these spots? You know, how do we find the hills, the ledges? Well, look, all of this charting software that's out there, 
there's just a lot of resources, but you've got to do your homework. You've got to put in the time. It may even cost you a little bit of money to you know, make that investment in this equipment that paints a clear picture for you. If you go out with a flat two-dimensional raster chart, it really can become challenging to identify depressions and upwellings and cliffs and all of that stuff that's gonna hold these fish. So having a three-dimensional view of the bottom is absolutely vital to success, and it really opens your eyes to everything that's happening down there. The bycatch, as I mentioned, you're gonna catch big tile fish, okay? You're gonna catch the big tile fish. I can't stress this enough. And that's a good thing because the tile fish will swim with the grouper. It's very, very rare that we'll deep drop for these deep water groupers and not see any tiles and only catch the grouper. They always seem to be mixed together. The black tunas, as I mentioned, also a possibility deep on the bottom, not something you would expect, but it happens more than you believe. And then of course, if you push the boundaries deeper, you're gonna find the black belly rose fish, the barrel fish, the queen snapper, maybe a warsaw, maybe a wreck fish, lot of other options even deeper. So it's just an exceptional fishery. Is it something that you should do every day? You know, no, I don't think so but it's certainly a tool that you absolutely should have in your arsenal. And it doesn't require a tremendous amount of gear, it just requires the right gear, okay? And a couple things, look, I honestly cannot stress this enough. Your connections are so important here. Every single knot, every time you, you know, crimp something, it has to be perfect. If it doesn't look right, that's because it isn't right. Spend the time to do it again. We spend so many hours here in the rigging station prepping for our time on the water. That's why we have a pretty damn good success ratio. It's not only the proper execution, but it's the proper preparation. And that leads me to remind you to please join Florida Sport Fishing TV Plus. That is an absolutely excellent resource to help shorten the learning curve, to improve your skill set. We're talking about 500 plus instructional videos on offshore fishing here in the Florida Keys and all around Florida in general. And there's so much valuable information there that's gonna help you get dialed in, not only on this fishery, but on all of the fisheries around the state as well. And finally, remember, rig it right and you're gonna stay tight.